Hello, welcome to Lit with Lloyd. I am your host, Lloyd Russell. Uh, I want to thank KCAT for hosting our show. Uh, and I am particularly excited about today's interview. Um, and I'll explain why once I've made the, uh, the introduction. Uh, Fred Weehy is the author of uh, a number of horror books, uh, novels, and other uh, types of writings that we're going to find out about. Uh, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, welcome, Fred. It's great to have you here. Very nice to be here, Lloyd. And before I ask you a question, I have to tell you the, the, the intro, my intro. Um, I've been doing the podcast for uh, somewhere between a year and a half and two. I also mm -hmm. have a book club that I've been running for over nine years in which the author prior to the pandemic always came to the bookstore, a recycled bookstore in Campbell. Mm -hmm. uh, but even during the pandemic, we still have an author zooming in. The reason I'm telling you this is you are my very first horror writer. Really? And so that's really exciting for me because I'm going to you know, learn stuff that I definitely did not know before. Um, as opposed to hearing it and forgetting it. So this will be, <laughs> this will be a real upgrade. Uh, all uh, right. All right. So uh, let me start by asking you about the uh, Horror Writers Association. Uh, is it HWA? It is, yes, <laughs> HWA. How old is it? And is it national, uh, international? It is international. And how old it is? I don't know, but it's very old. It's been around a very long time. I think that actually um, Dean Koontz and one or two other authors are were the creators of the Horror Writers Association. Um, although Dean Koontz no longer belongs to it, uh, he is one of he's one of the people that started the organization. Okay. Um, did Stephen King ever join? Yes, I believe he's still a member. Oh wow! Yeah. He received a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, about 10 or 12 years ago, Yeah, I believe. Does he get a, a, another one? I mean, <laughs> he should. Every every decade, probably, <laughs> he should get a Lifetime Achievement yeah. Award. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dean Koontz is, is a horror author that I used to read a lot in, the, in his early years. When he wrote horror. Yes. Yes, he no longer really writes horror. Uh, for the most part, anyway, it's more like suspense thrillers or. Oh, is that right? He's yeah. really because I haven't read him in a number of years. OK, yeah, uh, I used to read a lot of his older stuff as well. Um, actually, it was his novel Watchers uh -huh. that really got me started writing horror. Wow. Um, I always wanted to be a writer and I always loved horror. But um, when I read Watchers, I went, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to scare people. Wow, uh, I think that might have been the first of his book. I, I read uh, books I read, wasn't it? Uh, one of his, about a dog. Was that the uh, one about there the is dog? A, yes, there is a dog in it. Yeah, um, that, that, with special abilities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he loves dogs in his stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, with special abilities, and there's. Um, uh, I. It's been a long time since I've read it. We're talking uh -huh. back in the. Um, probably the 80s yeah um and, and i believe that the the it all has to do with government conspiracy kind of thing they created uh they had this experimental thing going on where they created the dog and another monster they had special abilities and the dog and the monster were somehow telepathically connected um and then it takes off from there yeah okay so that that was when you decided that you wanted to actually write horror books, it novels? Yeah. Were you writing anything prior to that? I was. Uh, I took a creative writing class in college that just as an elective for fun to get me away from uh, history that I was studying. <laughs> Which um, I majored in in yeah. college, by the way. Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's <laughs> that, no jobs in history, that is by correct. the way. <laughs> if you're out there going to school for history, please change majors. Uh, there, there is no job uh, unless you're going to teach history. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I was I was really into um, authors like Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Richard Brodigan, which is uh, I don't know if you know Richard Brodigan. I don't know he that was, name. He was a uh, kind of an underground San Francisco writer, um, Confederate general in Big Sur, was one of his big novels. Um, 
it, it was a lot in the vein like Kurt Vonnegut kind of okay nonsensical and um, but I loved Kurt Vonnegut as well Slaughterhouse Five um, and I was writing more in that kind of vein you know trying to find my voice uh, I think most authors start out that way kind of imitating your favorite authors uh-huh. until you find your own voice um, but then when I read um, when I read Watchers I went okay complete about face here wow um and i haven't looked back since okay so let's get into that you decided that you were going to write horror novels yeah horror stories horror or stories novels. yeah short okay. stories i mostly wrote novels in the beginning um which if you're an aspiring writer i don't recommend I recommend that you start with short stories. Uh, And the reason is because when you're going to write a novel for the first time, it's probably going to take you a good two years. To write the first one? To write the first one. Like I can, I can knock them off in a few months now if I need to. But, um, you know, I think the first one took me a couple of years and that's a big investment in time and um, learning energy to put into a novel and have nothing come of it. I think I wrote um, two or three novels before I got the first one published. Really? So I recommend that you start with short stories. Yeah. They're much uh, less time invested. Um, You can work on your craft, experiment. Um, It's just a lot easier to go from one to the other and not spend a lot of time. So if you're out there and you want to be an aspiring writer, even if you have a great idea for a novel, you should practice with short stories first. Yeah, okay. How many years ago was it that you started writing that first novel? (laughs) Well, actually... We're not going to ask your age. Yeah, please don't. (laughs) I wrote uh, my first novel, um, I think it was called Beyond... It was about a guy who was, and actually it was a little autobiographical, a guy who was hitchhiking across the country from Ohio to San Francisco, which I did. Ah. Um, but he could astral project. Um, so it was about his adventures coming across the country and astral projecting and, um, and things like that. And I believe that was in back, man, that had to be late 79, 80, something like that. Wow. Um, maybe 81 and then I wrote another one called Jerry's War that was more in the vein of I guess the closest comparison would be uh, what, what was the um, the world according to Garp kind of kind of novel <laughs> um, they're both sitting in a box at home you know <laughs> that back then you know I, I did them on a typewriter I had to go rent, of course right I had I, I actually wrote them longhand and then went and rent, rented a typewriter <laughs> and then typed it out myself <laughs> from the handwritten notes wow um, and then I next I guess the next one was Strange Days and that was the first real horror novel that I wrote um, and uh that didn't really get published until much later. Okay. Uh, it wasn't the first. It's the first horror novel I wrote, but not the first one that got published. Ah. The next one after that, Starkville, uh, was the first one that I got published. Okay. I want to talk about the publishing process because okay. that's always fascinating to hear what every author goes through. Um, how many, how many novels have you written, and do you have collections of short stories as well? I. I'll answer your second question first. <laughs> the answer is yes. How many novels? Uh, I'm going to say nine or ten, something like that. Okay. Um, and a couple collections, and I'm working on a collection of short stories right now. And are are they all in the horror genre? Uh, they are. Um, however. Even though I consider myself a, a horror writer first and foremost, I do cross over genres. Um, like I have a three book series that came out at the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023 um, that is science fiction horror. Uh huh. Um, it's about a physicist who creates a device that 
uh, opens up portals to parallel universes. Uh huh. Um, and what motivated him to do this was uh, to kill his girlfriend over and over again because <laughs> once just wasn't enough. Uh, so he murdered her in his in his universe and then traveled to other dimensions to kill her again. Oh my gosh, that that's unique. I've not heard that one before. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you wrote um, one horror novel, and then you wrote a second one. And mm -hmm. how did you get it published? Did you get an agent? Did you go the traditional route? Uh, the first one, I had an agent. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the agency. I don't think they they exist anymore. I think it was called Lee Shore uh, Literary Agency. They were back in Pittsburgh, I think. Um, so it was a long distance relationship. <laughs> uh, and But they did get my first novel published uh, originally in Canada and then later in the United States. Okay. Uh, and what about the second book? Is that How did that get published? Uh, the second book was Night Songs and I actually went a different route with that one. Um, that was back when iUniverse first came into being. I don't know if you've heard of iUniverse. They've changed a lot since um, since I started with them. Um, and, and then I never went that route again. Uh, it just They just never really did anything for me. It was one of those, um, I didn't have to pay anything to get it published, but um, I had to, what was it I had to do that was a little different? It wasn't a traditional publisher. Uh -huh. um, and I never went that route again. I know there's a lot of, they call them hybrid publishers uh -huh, now. Right. Right. And there's right. a lot of them cropping up. Which means that you have to pay a bunch of stuff you have to, to get to it pay done. For, right. You have to pay a fee, some kind of fee to get all the, I think they have like packages. Uh -huh, where, right. You know, they do the book cover, the editing, the, the, the publishing, the uh, marketing and things like that, depending on what package you buy. Yeah. Um, I don't really recommend that. Yeah, I, I, go 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 independent publishers, even if it's a small indie publisher. Or uh, there's plenty of them out there. And of course, you can certainly do self-publishing. That's yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's there. The publishing world has changed a lot since I first started. Um, I mean, this was back when the internet was in its infancy. I remember when Amazon first came into being <laughs> and I found Starkville on Amazon. I, I was like beside myself, you know, like, oh man, this is great. Uh, but it's changed a lot now. I mean, Amazon now has their own publishing. Right, um, right. You know, uh, I don't know if the publishing world is easier now or harder really yeah um, it's a double-edged sword uh-huh okay so what about the publishing of your other novels uh, uh most of them are through traditional publishers so um uh there's one that's no longer in print called the burning i think that was the one after night songs although i'm i'm right now reimagining the burning and uh same basic story, but characters have changed and um, uh, some action and things have changed in it. But I rewrote it as a novella to put uh -huh. into the new book that I'm working on, which is a collection of short stories uh, okay. and then a novella at the end. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm bringing it back, but much different than, well, not much different, but it's different. The, the main characters are all totally different except for one, which is a gypsy fortune teller. I changed her name, but she basically stayed the same. Uh, uh, let's see. After that, Strange Days came out. So my first novel, I kind of rewrote a little bit. And um, I, I'd i always loved Strange Days, but I, my writing style wasn't as good as it was by the time it got published. So I rewrote it, uh, kind of found a new voice. Uh, and then that was published by Home Publishing, which is a traditional small publishing company uh -huh. that is no longer in business as well. And that book is also out of print. You can still get it used, uh -huh. uh, but it's no longer, um, you can't get it new anywhere unless you find it somewhere. I did find a copy, a new copy, supposedly, on some, you know, those uh, stores that sell on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like... Uh, 
it was this unbelievable price. It's like 400 and something dollars <laughs> signed. Somehow they found the one signed. <laughs> uh, and I'm thinking, my God, how could you sell it for 400? Who's gonna buy that thing yeah. for $400? Um, and why aren't I getting any royalties from it <laughs> if they do? <laughs> uh, but you don't, you don't get any yeah. royalties off used copies, yeah. All right, so you had you had an agent. I assume the, the agent for the first book was the only book that that agent agented? It, it is. I eventually left her. Um, she uh, After that, she didn't seem to, you know, it was one of those long distance relationships were going back and forth and it just didn't really, in the end, work out. Yeah, yeah. I've actually had two agents. Um, the other agent was for the book Alaric Monster Hunter. Um, I can't remember the name of the agency. I think I blocked it out. Uh, <laughs> the, my agent within the agency left the company. Uh, he was like the only one, I guess, that really believed with in me in the agency. And he left for um, a publishing company to be an editor. Uh, and when he left, they kind of passed me around to different agencies and that. And I ended up uh, breaking the contract and asking for a list of publishers that they sent the book to that uh -huh. have not responded yet. Uh -huh. uh, we already had something like 21 rejections on it. And I had asked my agent at the time, do we need to rewrite? And he goes, well, no, because uh, no, no, one pu no publishers are saying the same thing for why they're rejecting it. Like one of them loved something but didn't like this, and then the other one loved what the other one didn't like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and didn't like something that the other one loved, and things like that. And he said, "You you never rewrite unless you have three publishers saying the same thing." <laughs> um, it's kind of like research. You always want to go. You always want three resources uh, when you're researching uh, something. You always want three resources, like the journalist rule, three resources to confirm your information. Uh, so we didn't do any rewrites. So I, I asked for the list of publishers that had not responded yet. Um, and then I started contacting them myself. And um, I came across a publisher that was still looking at the book and agreed to publish it. So uh, my uh, experience with agents were not good. I've had two and <laughs> neither one of them ended well. So, All right. I, and I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go out and get an agent. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it kind of soured me on agents. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to find out how you got the other books published with traditional publishers. Okay. So uh, we'll be right back with Fred Weehy in just a moment. Thank you to the City of Montessorino for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. The City of Montessorino has enabled KCAT to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. All right, and welcome back. Uh, we're talking with Fred Weehy, and we're learning a lot about uh, horror novels and short story collections. Uh, okay, so you did not have an agent uh, after the first couple. Uh, right. How did you get published? How did your other books get published and with, with whom? Uh, so I went the small independent uh, publisher route. Uh -huh. um, some of my books are published with a publisher called Black Bed Sheet Books. They are out of Sacramento. Actually, a friend of mine um, started that publishing company. Oh, wow. His name is Nick Grabowski. Uh, he used to write under the name uh, Nicholas Randall. Uh, he wrote the novelization for the movie Halloween 4 huh. um, and um, had a lot of novels out and published and decided that he wanted to be a publisher. So he started his own publishing company. And I was one of his first authors. Um, God, now he has hundreds of authors. Wow. And stuff. So, um, uh, so a lot of my books are published through him. Uh, the three book sci-fi horror series is published by um, 
<laughs> Why did I just go blank <laughs> on who they are? Raven Tail Publishing, oh, which good is save. a which is a new imprint from uh, they uh, they started out as a Western publisher. I think they called I think they're called Dark Horse Publishing, <laughs> um, and then started a horror imprint. Oh wow! Um, and now they also have hundreds of authors. They they specialize in book series. Uh, uh huh. They they like to put out three a three book book series. In fact, my book that I sent them uh, called Bloodshot, it was a full length novel, and they contacted me and said, "How would you feel about turning it into a series? Like taking that book and splitting it in two books, and then writing a third." <laughs> said because you 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 ended the story. Um, open-ended uh -huh. where it could go it, 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 were you thinking about a sequel and I said well actually yeah I did I was thinking about a sequel and he said well uh you know if you agree to write a third book we'll go ahead and you know find a place in the sec in the in the book to split it in yeah, two and yeah. end it I had to do some rewriting to do it but, sure um so I did that and book one came out in December of 2022 book two came out in early 2023 and then I had uh, book three finished by the time book two came out so I knocked book three out in like two months wow um, but I already had ideas for book three and where I wanted to go with it so it wasn't like I had to start from the beginning and how many words for each of the three roughly uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna say 35,000 okay. words each book they okay. look, they say they their readers they've taken a poll I guess uh, their readers like shorter reads, but continuing stories. Uh -huh. So that's the route they've pretty much taken. But now I've heard that they're also um, publishing full-length novels as well. So longer works. Uh, they do a lot of anthologies as well. Yeah, I think, I feel I, I feel like 90,000 is a somewhat typical 80 to novel. 80 to 90,000. 80 yeah, 80,000 okay. is pretty typical. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're Stephen King, it's more like 300,000. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's face it. <laughs> or, or Ken Follett. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or Mitchner or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Um, what, what kind of activities do you do with the Horror Writers Association or other conventions? Oh, I do. Um, I've done a lot of conventions, and some have been in conjunction with the Horror Writers Association. A lot of times they'll be at a convention and actually um, pay for the table or whatever it is they need uh -huh. to do to get the table. Um, and then they just invite members. Are you going to be in town or can you come here? Um, and we tag team like there's three or four at a time. And then you go off and enjoy the convention while three or four more people come and um, they have everybody's books out. Um, they're usually pretty fun because I get to hobnob with my fellow wizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> uh, you know, and I've met a lot of really great people at those. Um, I do. Well, I was just telling I was telling you before uh, we got went on the air. I was supposed to be at and I've done Westercon in the past. Um, I believe they were in San Diego when I did it. They had WesterCon 75, which is, they've had 75 years of wow. this convention that was supposed to be in Anaheim over 4th of July weekend, uh, but they canceled it for unforeseen circumstances. Uh -huh. Excuse me, I'm going to fix my headset. <laughs> um, I never really fig found out exactly why, but they just said unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately. So um, I did, so I, I've, I've done BayCon uh, which is a local convention a lot over the years. Um, so I contacted them because they have a convention in Santa Clara at the Marriott uh, Fourth of July weekend oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be there instead. Uh, and as is it go? Uh, does it, they have a lot of different genres represented there? Uh, it's more science fiction ah. slash horror, oh, probably, okay. and fantasy, science fiction, fantasy, horror convention. Yeah. Okay. Heavy on the sci-fi fantasy. All right, um, but your your most recent stuff is still has has a horror element or two. Yes, I'm. I, so 
Alaric Monster Hunter is actually considered an urban fantasy. Uh huh. Um, it's about a 200 year old gypsy uh, who hunts monsters for bounty. Uh, he has a secret of his own why he's 200 years old and can still hunt monsters, you know. Um, and in this story, he has to actually save a zombie instead of exterminate it. Um, there's a mad scientist who, it's kind of my homage to old time horror. There's um, werewolves in it, zombies, um, a mad scientist uh, like um, Dr. Jekyll. Um, he's running experiments looking for the fountain of youth and, and eternal life. And he came, he came with this concoction where he added uh, the zombie virus to it because basically zombies are immortal, <laughs> the undead. Um, but he didn't get the dosage right. So he's been experimenting on gypsies. Uh, this all came about back when, I can't remember how many years ago it was, but remember when there was a flu vaccine shortage? Uh, it was some years ago, there was a flu vaccine oh, wow. shortage. I, uh, I think it was in the mid 2000s. Okay. Um, early to mid 2000s. And he was using the flu vaccine shortage uh, as a means to inject people giving away free flu vaccines. Huh. Um, and uh, he was working with the King of the Gypsies to experiment on gypsies um, and basically trying to um, get the right dosage of the zombie virus and was turning people into zombies. But each time he, he changed the dose, the zombies would change, right? They wouldn't be full zombies. So this zombie that shows up at Alaric's door can still think, can still uh, somewhat talk, and hasn't lost his identity totally. Um, so that's, uh, and he's gypsy. So that sends Alaric on this quest to find um, an antidote. Um, and he gets mixed up with the king of the gypsies and the mad scientists and all this stuff. And it takes place in alternate San Francisco. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, do you do you find that you go into a bookstore on occasion and ask if you can do a reading or have an event at a bookstore? Oh, I've had a lot of book signings. You have, yeah, okay. A lot of book signings in bookstores, uh, Barnes and Nobles, back when Borders existed. Yes, indeed. Oh, remember um, B. Dalton? Absolutely. Oh, I was at B. Dalton's a lot. Um, Walden Books. Yep. Uh, in fact, my first book signing was at a Walden Books in downtown San Jose. <laughs> um uh, oh God, yeah, I've done a lot of them. I haven't, okay. I haven't done any since the pandemic, uh, but I'm looking to get back out Good. there into those. I've done a few conventions since the pandemic, but not a, not a book signing at a bookstore. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make a little bit of a uh, curve here. Uh, on your website, uh, mm -hmm. it does say that you are a screenwriter. What does that? I, let me, <laughs> what does that mean? Let me rephrase. <laughs> how does that? How does that affect you, or how do you affect it? Uh, <laughs> well, I am a screenwriter, and I did have a screenplay um, that was optioned by a production company. Um, it was actually so. Fright House, that picture of the book that you have up there, yeah, uh, originated as a screenplay. Um, I was at a convention and I think it was Silicon when it still existed. You remember Silicon in San Jose? I don't uh -huh. know. Um, they always had it at the Doubletree in downtown San Jose. Um, I was there and there was a director producer there named D Dave Rita. Um, can't remember the name of his production company, but he was screening a, a new movie that he had made there. Um, and he came up to me and he, he goes, why aren't you working for me? And I went, I don't know, why aren't I? <laughs> uh, so we started bouncing ideas around on what to do. And um, I like the idea of um, an insane asylum turned into a Halloween attraction. And he liked the idea of a ghost hunting team. Uh, so I said, well, why don't we just combine them? <laughs> and that's basically what I did. And I wrote a screenplay, it was optioned, it was stuck in pre-production hell for 
years. Oh my gosh. And I finally said, Dave, you know, I don't know what, if this is ever going to get produced. How would you feel about me writing a novelization of it? Maybe that will help. Who knows? Um, so he gave his okay and I went ahead and wrote a Fright House. It's not exactly like the screenplay, uh, but it basically follows the same storyline. I think what I did was I, I made the, um, the heroine younger. It's more of a, a, a young adult novel uh -huh. uh, where the heroine Penny Winters is 17 years old um, and she runs away from home because she had been put into um, care homes and things like that because she basically is uh, clairvoyant and sees dead people, sees ghosts. Um, it's kind of a cross between The Shining and Ghost Hunters. Uh, she gets a job, and while she's, she runs away from home, she gets a job at the last place she should be at, which is an insane asylum turned <laughs> Halloween attraction. Uh, uh, she lies about her age and she gets this managerial job. Um, and she's basically the key that unlocks the ghosts. They've been lying dormant in this insane asylum and she's the key that unlocks it and they want her because if they make her part of fright house then uh they can live forever uh when people start going missing the owner of the insane the halloween attraction called fright house um gets this group of ghost hunters that have a cable tv show to come and investigate and that just makes things worse uh things kind of go really off the rails uh after that and when did you finish this this one um god you're asking me for dates no no uh, just a few see. years ago or uh this one is is fairly new i mean okay. it's been out for maybe um five years okay maybe. okay yeah uh and um, and, and um how did it feel to write basically a trilogy? I mean, because all of your other novels were standalones, correct? Correct, yeah. Did you, in, did you enjoy that process of, of may having three separate books? Uh, I did, yeah. I never thought of it before, um, but I did enjoy the process. It, it would, I, I would have I probably enjoyed it much better if I knew I was going to write a three-book series from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it was kind of a curveball. yeah. Um, but I think it, the way the first novel was written, it worked out really well. Uh, it was not difficult at all to find a place that I could end book one with a little rewriting and start book two with a little rewriting. Um, and then I really enjoyed book three because I took it in a whole different direction. Um, even, the, even though the original villain well, not the original villain, but from another multiverse villain, same guy, was uh -huh. in the book. He wasn't the main antagonist. Someone who was the victim in book one became the antagonist in book three. <laughs> <laughs> the original girlfriend, <laughs> uh, or one of her, um, what, do you, what, what do you call them? I guess doppelgangers from another yeah. universe. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're working on a collection of short stories now. I am. It's called um, uh, Stories and Poetry That Haunt the Mind and Soul. Okay, and what comes after this? I assume it's not going to be a romance. Uh, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> just a just, wild guess. So my mother, <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is my mother-in-law used to always ask, uh, aren't you going to ever write anything besides horror? You know? How about a romance? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm probably not. Well, you would be among the 50% of all published novels are romance, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. It's a big, yeah, it's a big industry. I should probably think about it. Yeah. All right, but um, what is next? Uh, that's a good question. I wish I had sure. a, I wish I had an answer. I'm not sure. Um, I, I mean, I have lots of ideas that have been... You know, I probably have more ideas than I have time in my life to write. Um, yeah. So it's a matter of uh, really zeroing in on one of them or coming up with something new. Okay. Um, I really haven't thought that much about it because I'm trying to finish this one. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I was actually writing uh, this collection uh, back when 
I got the book series published and I had to write book three. So I had to set this one aside to write book three. And then it took me a while to get back into it. Yeah. And, um, but it's almost done. Okay. All right, good. My last question. Um, the, your website also says that you teach creative writing. Does that still, do you still teach it? Uh, I have not taught creative writing since the pandemic. Okay. Uh, I was teaching for uh, Fremont Union High School District, um, and I was teaching for small, independent, after-school programs for kids. So I taught kids and adults how to write cre- how to write fiction. Um, I taught at a lot of other different types of writing as well, um, like business writing and essay writing. Um, uh, SAT writing, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But creative writing was really my passion. Uh, and then when the pandemic hit, you know, everything got shut right, down and right. I just never really went back into it. Okay. So you don't think that's going to uh, try never, it again? Never say never. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Never say never. I really enjoy uh, teaching. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy teaching creative writing. I have a companion book that I used in um, my adult classes. Uh, that you can get on Amazon called uh, Creative Writing, Get Started Writing Fiction. Uh, that was the basic book that I used to teach uh-huh. those courses. Oh, that's really cool. All right, so we are uh, out of time. Uh, we are going to um, open it up to the uh, audience for questions. Okay. And audience, uh, how about if we hear a round of applause uh, <laughs> for Fred? <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> All right, uh, we're now going to take some uh, audience questions. And uh, who's first? Speak uh, up. <laughs> uh, who's your favorite character and why? Who's my favorite ca- character that I created? Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say Alaric from Alaric Monster Hunter. Um, I don't know why uh, the reason. Well, okay. So the way he came about was really weird because um, my wife and son um, had seen, I believe it was a World War One monument uh, for soldiers who died in in the war, and had a list of names. And my wife came home and said, "I got a great name for you for a character, Alaric." Huh. And I went, okay, but. Um, okay so I have a name but nothing else and she goes well you're the writer you come up with something uh so uh you know I thought about him and thought about him and um and one morning I I, one night I had a dream about him uh and woke up and went okay now I know who Alaric is oh wow so uh he was kind of special to me came to me in a couple different ways and um kind of took off from there um, I like him because he's an anti-hero. You know, he's he, his heart's in the right place, but he's willing to cross the line <laughs> to get done what he needs to yeah. get done. Yeah, yeah. And uh, don't mess with anyone that he loves because he will mess with you. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you were able to answer that because it sounds kind of like, who's your favorite child? Right. <laughs> well, it is kind of, when people ask me... <laughs> So it's a little different question. When people ask me, uh, what's your favorite, which one is your favorite book? That one I have a hard time answering because it is like, who is your favorite child? Yeah. Um, (laughs) But uh, I I would say that he's probably my favorite character that I've created. Um, That book also is kind of dear to me too because it was my first bestseller. Um, And it got rejected. That was the one I told you about with the agent and left me and then I had to track publishers down myself yeah yeah and I was really feeling um depressed and defeated and I went out one morning to take a walk around the neighborhood I'm just walking around and I'm kind of I got my head down and I'm kind of looking at the sidewalk and I'm feeling really dejected and I see this dollar bill this dollar bill that's just lying face up on the sidewalk and it had something written on it so I reach down and I pick it up and somebody had written on on it, never give up on your dreams. Whoa. And I went, whoa. Okay. And that got me back on track. That is crazy. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. All right, next question. 
have you ever had any personal paranormal or horror kind of moments in your life? Uh, I don't think we have enough time in the show for me to <laughs> tell you about all of them, but yes, um, I have seen a ghost or two. Um, I'll tell you one, I'll try to make it a quick story. Huh. Um, it, it's when I was in college, I was uh, visiting a friend who got remarried and his new wife had two little girls. Um, and they bought a house, or actually they rented a house and they invited me over to dinner. So I went over and I had dinner with them and um, the two little girls went to bed. They had a pool table down in the basement and we went down after dinner and was playing pool. And it got pretty late and they said, well, why don't you just sleep over on the sofa? Uh, okay. And I, before we went back upstairs, I racked the balls on the pool table and I put the cue ball at the other end and we went upstairs. And as you go up the stairs, um, the stairs kind of share, the basement shares a wall with the living room. So as you're going up the stairs, it's the living room and there's a sofa on that wall. So as you go up the stairs and go out the basement door and turn left, the sofa's there and you go through the living room uh -huh. Then you turn the corner and then there's stairs that go up to the second floor to the left and their master bedroom to the right. So I'm sleeping on the couch. I've got my head towards the basement door and my feet towards the other stairwell. And I wake up to the balls on the pool table cracking and, and uh, flying across the pool table, wow. the cue ball hitting it. And I kind of jerked up, but I didn't get up all the way. And then I heard footsteps on the stairs. And being the brave person that I am, I lay back down and <laughs> closed my eyes. <laughs> I had my face to the wall and my back to the room. Um, and then the footsteps stopped. And so I kind of uh, just raised my head and peeked over my shoulder. And I could see this figure that had turned the corner but stopped, a figure of a man. Um, but his face was kind of blurry like... Um, the real cop shows where they want to blur out somebody's yeah, face, yeah, like the yeah. suspect's face. It was kind of like that, where I couldn't make it out. And again, being the brave person that I am, I closed my eyes and lay back down, <laughs> you know, hoping that if I just fake sleep, it'd leave me alone. Uh, the next thing I felt was somebody sitting down on the sofa next to me and kind of leaning against my back. At that point, I was about ready to pee my pants. Yeah but I stayed firm, <laughs> I committed wow. to sleep. Um, and then I felt him get up and I heard footsteps and I kind of raised my head and I saw this figure go around the corner and then I could hear footsteps on uh, the stairs going upstairs. And then the next thing we heard were the two little girls waking up screaming, stop tickling my feet, stop tickling our feet, leave us alone. My two friends hopped up from their bedroom. I hopped up. We ran upstairs, turned on the lights, and they were kicking their feet and screaming, but nobody was there. Wow. Um, and that's when they said, oh, yeah, by the way, I think our, we think our house is haunted. <laughs> it's like you couldn't tell me that before you invited me to stay over. <laughs> wow. That, that's 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 a, quite a story. Yeah. Uh, that's That was probably my first uh, experience with a ghost. I have a few more, but. Yeah. Well, our son, you know, has gone on ghost trips and he's gone on the battleship in mm -hmm. Alameda. That's 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 haunted. And, you know, he's done overnights. I mean, so he's done some of that stuff, too. But I don't think he has any story quite like that. <laughs> All right. All any right. other question? That was a long answer for that question. But <laughs> well, uh, what kind of research do you do for your books? Uh, I do a lot of research. Um, I mean, there are things in my books, okay, the horror part uh, doesn't necessarily need to be researched, right? But the, for instance, that three book series that had to do with multiverses and creating a device that opens up portals, that took a lot of research um, to understand, um, because I go into some description on the device and how, and him working on it and creating, each time he goes to a new uni a new dimension, he, he can't take the device with him. He has to leave it behind. So he has to build another device. Um, so there's that research into the into multiverses and the theories behind. There's a lot of different theories on why multiverses exist or if they do exist. 
and how you can create a device that might be able to open portals um, and things like that. Um, I also do research on places, uh, like settings and uh -huh. stuff. I'd like to go there and, and see them for myself or research it. And so I have a really good idea of where, where the book is set. Um, uh, so I do, each book has a certain amount of research, some more than others. The thing about research though is, uh, you end up with a lot more research than you use in the book, uh -huh. right? Uh, probably 10% of research actually gets into a fictional story. Wow. The rest is just so you know what you're talking about yeah, and yeah. you know um, it gives it that believability. The, the important thing about horror is, and you have to ground it in reality for people to take the leap to believe in the supernatural. So you want to ground it in um in real life uh in the knowledge that something really could work and make it believable yeah and yeah, then yeah. they can take that leap into the supernatural and believe in the supernatural yeah, yeah. as well makes sense yeah. okay uh do we have one more question yeah all right last question hi fred so question for you i know earlier you said that it's hard for you to pick a favorite book my question is going to be similar my question is which was your favorite book to write and why? Oh, that is, that, that is a different yeah. uh, question. Okay. It sure is. Um, hmm. Uh, I'm going to say Fright House because it did start out as a screenplay. So it had, it had all these different um, uh, layers to it. So it, it started out just bouncing ideas with Dave and coming up with these two different storylines and then combining them and figuring out a way to combine them. Um, and then the whole screenplay process was very fun. It was my first screenplay. I have written another one um, since then. I haven't gotten it uh, produced yet, but uh, I do have one that's based on another uh, novella uh -huh. called Under the Protection of Witches. Um, it's in my book, The Collected Nightmares. But um, going through that process was very fun. And then turning it into a novel had its own unique fun to it because now I'm taking a story that I already created because uh, a novel and a screenplay are two totally different beasts. Um, in a screenplay, it's all about action and dialogue. There's no real subtext. Well, there's subtext, but there's no description. There's no, uh, there's, you can't get into really character development. You can't get inside characters' heads. You can't reveal anything to the audience that the character's thinking. Um, it's all action and dialogue. So then you're turning that into a novel uh, where you have a point of view character uh, in a screenplay, the camera is your point of view. Mm -hmm. In a novel, you have a point of view character or characters that drive the story. And now you're able to get into what really makes them tick, uh, what's in their heart and their minds, uh, what they fear, what they, um, you know, who they really are. Uh, so that was really fun taking that screenplay, which I consider like a bare bones novel because it's more like an outline and dialogue uh -huh. and action and stuff, right? and now fleshing it out into a bigger story. Yeah. So that was really a fun process. Yeah, that's great. Uh, audience, thank you for your questions. Those were great questions. And uh, thank you for being a terrific audience. I'll, I'll applaud for them. Thank you. Oh, the last thing I want to point out is that that book cover was created by my son, Ian Brenner Weehy, uh, for Fright House. Um, it, it was originally published by a different publishing company that had a different cover. That's uh -huh. why there was a different cover. Uh -huh. And once th they went out of business and I lost the rights, but the artist that did the book cover still owned the rights, so I couldn't use it. So he created that book cover for me, and I actually love it much more than the old book cover. And then he's done a couple more for me, Alaric Monster Hunter and uh, The Collected Nightmares. Great. Yeah, that's a great, great cover. Yeah. Uh, okay.
we are closing the book on today's podcast. I uh, want to thank KCAT for uh, hosting the show and producing it for us. Uh, I want to thank uh, Fred Weehy for uh, coming on down and being a part of this. Uh, I want to thank the audience for their enthusiasm. <laughs> Good job, audience. Uh, and uh, if you want to see um, uh, other podcasts, uh, then you can go on lloyd.show forward slash YouTube and you'll be able to see some of the others. Uh, so uh, we'll see you next time. You just heard Lit with Lloyd here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio. Thank you.